So alongside the Mac suit changes that we discussed in a video about a week ago now, some other goodies have made their way to the public test server that deserve some discussion. And yeah, there's some additional balance changes in there, sure, but also some brand new class abilities. So g'day there once again, viewers. This is your mate Kamikaze78 here. And today we're gonna be talking about the latest update to hit the public test server once again to look at the upcoming content for Planetside 2. So yeah, as I said at the start of this video, we've already spent a good deal of time talking about the max suit changes. We're not going to be looping back to those changes today, but if you missed that video, then check it out via the card at the top of your screen now. Now, today's focus is on the new faction specific abilities and a couple of other balance changes of note. And we are going to start off today's video by discussing these new faction abilities. Well, I say new, some of these abilities were available as prototypes way back when the campaign events were running, sort of as unlike blocks for completing the campaign objectives, but now they are coming to the game as cert progression trees and they are here to stick around. And I gotta be blunt here, some factions are certainly getting a better cut of the deal than others. In saying that though, everything we talk about in this video is gonna be very theory heavy, as it's pretty hard to test these abilities effectively in a closed test environment, and all gameplay that you're seeing in today's video is coming from the live server as opposed to the test server for that exact reason. But anyway, disclaimers aside, we'll start off by talking about everyone's favorite spandex enthusiasts, the VS. The VS are going to be receiving the Hermes cloaking device for their infiltrator class. And this is really a short burst cloak ability that caters to a more aggressive play style and allows players to close the distance a little bit more effectively, if you will. You know, allow infiltrators to engage in infiltrator shenanigans sooner rather than later. This cloaking device will provide a boost to your sprint speed while cloaked and full damage resistance while taking a hit to its cloak uptime as a counterbalance. At maximum rank, the cloak will last 8.5 seconds with an 11 second recharge time, but will increase your sprint speed by 25%, which is no laughing matter at all. After, again, testing it all very rudimentarily on the test server, you can really feel that boost in speed, and it's going to be very helpful to your SMG infiltrators who need to close the gap very quickly, or sometimes build the gap on a less than ideal position as needed. Now, when you compare this to the Hunter Cloaking Device, which has a 12 second uptime against a 7 second recharge, it doesn't really take a mathematician to work out that the new Hermes Cloak is not only going to take some time to get used to, but is going to demand that you use said cloak a little more sparingly or carefully, if you will. Yes, that cloak is going to help you close the distance faster on certain environments, but with the limited uptime, it means that you'll have to be very careful in how you use it, especially considering it has that longer recharge time to boot. In all honesty, I'm pretty keen to get my hands on this ability once it goes live, and I don't foresee this ability having a material impact to the wider game in a bad way. It'll just be a fun option for more aggressive or cunning VS infiltrators. But okay, this is where we change our tune for a moment here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on to the TR side of things and place the magnifying glass over the triage pulse ability for the combat medic. This little number has actually received a balance pass already since its introduction to the test server, but we'll start off with its initial form here and go from there. The ability is essentially a panic button nano regen device, which will at maximum rank, heal all allies within six meters for 60 health per second for five seconds. But in addition, allies below 200 health currently are healed for 150 health immediately. And this all comes at the cost of a 25 second recharge time on the ability. So what that effectively gives you is 300 HP of healing over five seconds on a target in one charge or 450 HP in the event that the ally in question is below that 200 HP barrier. So let's take a moment to compare this against the combat medic's default option, the nano regen capacitor. The nano regen capacitor that we're all basically used to by now will heal for 75 HP per second over eight seconds, which gives it a total of 600 HP over that eight seconds of healing. At maximum rank, the nano regen capacitor takes 34.8 seconds to achieve a full recharge. So we effectively have a new ability that, in comparison to the nano regen capacitor, provides a sharp burst of HP to the most critical friendlies, but is limited in its ongoing support. Since then, 
the triage pulse has received a change that now makes it an energy based ability that still requires a full charge to activate similar to that of how the ambush or jump jets work and I also believe that full recharge time is still around 25 seconds but what that subtle change does allow for though is for implants that impact ability energy to now apply to the triage pulse. So if you're running say a simulate and combat surgeon then you can get that cooldown timer on this thing pretty low with some aggressive gameplay. But I gotta admit, I still don't see it serving much purpose even after these new changes. Obviously, its saving grace is that 150 HP burst that applies to really low health allies immediately. That's its shtick, right? But to hit it properly, you just need to end up micromanaging the health bars of your teammates in a point room instead of actually being a quote unquote combat medic. You'll have no time to actually fight targets. If you mistime the pulse by hitting it just before an ally falls below 200 HP, or you miss them when you activate the ability, then you'll be in a far worse position given that you must wait for the pulse to come back online with a relatively lengthy recharge time. Again, if you just slightly get the timing off, it becomes a relative waste compared to the nano regen capacitor. The nano regen capacitor is very much a set and forget thing, especially with the right implants and in a particularly aggressive playstyle. It's never going to put you in a situation where you feel like you've wasted your ability's energy when you're in a, you know, gun ho point room battle. It's always going to be passively healing allies in the vicinity. And even just for general one-on-one -on -one gameplay, the nano regen capacitor gives you so much more flexibility in its application when you're playing as a combat medic that the triage pulse just isn't going to give you due to the very nature of its ability. At the end of the day, the nano regen capacitor is just a tool that far better fits the planet side to chaos and is something that will have far more applicability over this new triage pulse, at least in my opinion. Long and short of it is, I have some concerns about this new ability and I think the TR might be having a rough day with it. I don't think it's going to be that useful in the grand scheme of things. And for my TR compadres here, I'm very sorry, but by us now moving on to cover the NC ability next, this is going to feel especially like a personal attack. Don't kill the messenger, yeah? I'm just the messenger here. The NC, ladies and gents, are going to be receiving the Demeter Veil, a brand new overshield ability for the Heavy Assault. While this ability is active, it's going to reduce incoming damage to you and all allies within a 6 meter range by 25% for 6 seconds. At maximum rank, this will take 10 seconds to fully recharge. So, how does this compare against your standard overshields? Well, the resist shield is a 35% damage resistance, which gives you an effective HP of 1538. If you activate a nanite mesh generator or adrenaline shield the moment you start taking fire, you have an effective HP of 1450. With the Demeter Veil, you land on an effective HP of 1,333 recurring, assuming you activate it before you take any damage to your core health. So it is by far the weakest shield of the bunch for personal security. But the narrative changes a ton when this thing is applied to every single ally within a six meter range. Imagine that, a combat medic running carapace with constantly running nano regen capacitor. Imagine that loadout, let alone a squad of that loadout with the Demeter Veil affecting them as well. Let's just say you've got a couple of heavy assaults running this thing in a point room holdout, right? And you're rotating out its use as needed amongst your squad members. That is going to be a consistently rolling 25% damage reduction for all allies in that room. That is going to be a significant defender's advantage in the right situation. And truth be told, I've got some slight concerns about how impactful this ability may be when it comes to attackers trying to break through choke points that have been set up by NC squads running this ability. It's already enough to have a few heavy assaults in a room that are tanky on their own account, making it difficult enough to break through, right? But now they're going to be tanking up the rest of the team around them. It's going to make it an absolute chore to break through as an attacker when everybody the fighting against has a passive 25% reduction to damage potentially. Now, yes, when it comes to straight up 1v1 fights, no, this ability will be as useless as tits on a bull, and it'll be a handicap against any other shield in the game, and the majority of other heavy assaults running them in those 1v1 environments. But, I've got a feeling that this is going to be the biggest ability in the context of having an impact on the flow of the game and its objectives out of this entire update. I honestly wouldn't be opposed to this ability getting a bit of a pushback to the drawing board and maybe a bit of a revisiting. But, maybe it won't be that bad either, and I'm over exaggerating 
exaggerating. Let me know in the comments section down below what your thoughts are. Now, last, but certainly, and I mean really certainly not least, we've got the repair drone for the NSO engineers. This cute little bastard is making a long-awaited return to Araxis after being shoved into the locker for a while. The long and short of it is that this repair drone can be slotted into the turret slot of your NSO engineer loadout and will repair all mechanical targets within a 10 meter range. At maximum rank, it will repair at a rate of 52 health per second, which when combined with the repair tool is going to make these NSO engineers incredibly incredibly useful assets to any vehicle column. Hell, with the latest max suit changes that are coming as well, I think many are going to want an NSO engineer or two pocketing them for good measure. Unfortunately, your little buddy here can be shot down by enemies and will have a 45 second cooldown timer on deployment. I've honestly got not much to say about this little lad. I'm kind of glad he's coming back if I'm being completely honest. So those are the class abilities. They definitely take up the majority of the talking points for this update beyond the max suit changes, but there are a couple of other talking points points that we'll quickly go over here before we wrap up the video. Firstly, the Nimitz reactor for the NC Vanguard is actually getting a pretty significant rework across the board. This comes from changes such as, you know, shield recharge delays now being standardized at six seconds upon receiving any kind of damage, the shield regeneration rate being improved across the rank upgrades, sometimes reflecting a double in shield regeneration per second. But probably the most impactful change coming to the Nimitz reactor for the NC Vanguard is that going forward by activating either your forward Vanguard shield, fire suppression or smoke screen, it will restore 500 shield health immediately to the Nimitz reactor. Now, I'm someone that barely, if not ever, used the Nimitz reactor in its current form on the live server, so I'm very interested to hear from the vehicle players in the chat down below as to whether or not this change is actually going to have a material impact on the Nimitz reactor going forward. Let me know, folks, because you'll be in a much stronger position to talk to that with some authority than I am currently. Overall, though, based on my high-level reading, that looks like a set of really good changes for the slot. And lastly, and kind of thank God, the Banshee and the Air Hammer for the TR Mosquito and NC Reaver, respectively, are getting nerfs. These nerfs are happening on two fronts, one of which is happening through the extended magazine size upgrade and how much that actually impacts the ultimate magazine size of the weapons, and also a blast damage reduction across the board. The Banshee's blast damage is being reduced by a magnitude of 33% and the air hammer is being reduced by a magnitude of 40%. Pretty significant stuff there, it has to be said. But yeah folks, that pretty much wraps up all of the major talking points I had for the PTS update as it currently stands. These changes are coming out faster than I can get videos out, so the next time we talk about these updates will most likely be when they hit the live server. If you're keen on that, make sure to hit subscribe down below so you can stay up to date with all future videos that we release on the channel. And if you like the video, well then, hit that glorious like button as it does go a long way to supporting the video in the YouTube algorithm. Leave some comments down below about your thoughts on everything we talked about today. But once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.